SwiftUI gives us two environment values to monitor the current size class of our app, which in practice means we can show one layout when space is restricted and another when space is plentiful. For example, in our current layout, we're displaying the resort details and snow details in a H-stack like this. Each of those subviews are internally using a V-stack, so we can end up with a two by two grid, two rows with two views in each row. This looks great when space is restricted, but when we have more space, it would look better to have them all in one row. To make this happen, we could create copies of resort details view and ski details view that handle the alternative layout. But a much smarter solution is to have both those views be layout neutral, to have them automatically adapt to being placed in the H-stack or a V-stack, depending on the parent that places them. First, add this new at environment property to resort view. At environment, horizontal size class, var size class. That'll tell us whether we have a regular or compact size class. Very roughly, all iPhones in portrait have compact width and regular height. Most iPhones in landscape have compact width and compact height. Large iPhones, that's plus sized and max sized devices in landscape have regular width and compact height. And all iPads in both orientations have regular width and regular height. Things get a little more complex for iPad when it comes to split view mode, which is when you have two apps running side by side. iOS will automatically downgrade our app to a compact size class at various points, depending on the exact iPad model and orientation. Fortunately, all we care about are those two horizontal options. Do we have lots of space, regular, or is space restricted, compact? If space is low, we're going to keep the current nested VStack approach so we don't try and squeeze everything onto one line. But if there's more space, we'll ditch that and place the views directly into the parent HStack. So find the HStack that contains the resort details view and ski details view and replace it with this. If size class is compact, we'll do a spacer, then a VStack resort details view, resort, resort, and a VStack Ski Details View, Resort, Resort. Else, i.e. Regular Size Class, Resort Details View, Resort, Resort. Spacer, Ski Details View, Resort, Resort. As you can see, that moves the VStack work up to the parent view rather than keeping it inside Resort Details View and Ski Details View. This hasn't really changed much, and in fact, things have gotten a little worse. Because if you run an iPhone 11 Pro Max in landscape, a regular size class, the two child views are spaced oddly, so we went from two spaces down to one. Fixing that problem is easy, but it creates other problems at the same time. Fortunately, those are easy to fix as well, so stick with me, we'll get there. To make our two child views layout neutral, i.e. to make them have no specific layout direction of their own, but instead be directed by their parent, we have to make them use group rather than vStack. So, update ski details view to this. Put a group here. And update resort details view to this. Put a group here. On an iPhone in portrait mode, these look identical because we've gone from having a VStack nested inside another VStack to having a group nested inside a VStack. There's no layout difference. But in landscape, things are looking a little better because all four text views are now being laid out in a single line. They're laid out badly in a single line, but at least they're on a single line. The next step is to add some spaces between our child views to make sure they put space between their text views. So, update ski details view to this, put a spacer here, and update resort details view to this, and put a spacer here. If you run the app again, you'll see things have gotten both better and worse at the same time. Better in landscape because now all four pieces of text are spaced neatly across the view but worse in portrait because those new spaces are causing havoc in our vertical stacks. We have size and elevation at the top, then a large gap, then price and snow below. To fix this problem, we have to tell the spaces we only want them to work in landscape mode. They shouldn't try to add space vertically. So, modify the spaces inside resorts detail view and ski details view to have zero height, like this. Dot frame, height zero. Once again, this is a step forward combined with a step backward. Our vertical spacings now disappeared, as intended, but now the two child views have no space between them. The space we place between them is now tiny. This happens because using spacer frame height zero creates a frame with a flexible width, 
causing the child views to take up all available space, which in turn means there's nothing left for the space to be placed between those two child views. So we have to give that outer space a flexible width too. Any frame at all is fine, because it will result in the same flexible frame. Try this for example. Frame height zero. And now we're almost there. The layout looks good in portrait, and in landscape, the four pieces of text are spaced evenly. However, you might notice the elevation wraps across two lines, even though there's lots of space free. This is another place where I think SwiftUI is at fault, because I think text should always have a higher layout priority than a spacer. Hopefully, this will get fixed in a future SwiftUI update. In the meantime, if this problem affects you, then what we need to do is tell SwiftUI our text is more important than our spaces. This can be done by adding the layout priority one modifier to each of our four text views. So in ski details view, we'll add layout priority one here and here. And then in resort details view, we'll add layout priority one here and here. Now finally, our layout should look great in both orientations. One single line of text in a regular size class and two rows of vertical stacks in a compact size class. It took a little work, but we got there in the end. Our solution didn't result in code duplication, which is a huge win, but it also left our two child views in a better place. They're now there just to serve up their content without specifying a layout. So parent views can switch between HStack and VStack whenever they want, and SwiftUI will take care of the layout for us. The only rules we did add are ones that make sense. Our text is important and should be even increased priority when it comes to layout.